Hi everyone, I'm back today to do my review of Thomas Hardy's Tests of the D'Urbervilles, which incidentally I did read on Kindle. Just as a general point, I had to read this book for my course, but that doesn't mean that it affected my opinion of this book in any way, and just as a general point, I really really liked this book. I thought it was fantastic, I thought it just it just got to me, like you know sometimes when you read a book and while you're reading it, it's really getting to you and it's just like your heart and your soul starts to kind of be connected to this book. That's what happened to me when I read this book, it was great. Um, but yeah, let me get started on the things that I liked. So, some people feel that there's too much metaphor in Test of the D'Urbervilles and I do understand that point, like there is a lot of really kind of obvious metaphor that's kind of shoved in your face as a reader. And sometimes it is a little bit insulting because you think, you kind of think to yourself, well, Hardy, do you think that your readers couldn't pick up on any subtle kind of metaphor or any kind of subtle um, message behind your text without making it blatantly obvious what you're trying to do? But despite this, I really like some of the metaphor. Well, for me, I think the most powerful metaphor of all, the most powerful image for me in this book was the blood dripping from the ceiling after Tess kills. Alec. Spoiler alert by the way. Um, and I think probably the, the reason why I most love this book is because it really got to me. It is so heartbreaking and so raw. Hardy's portrayal of women is so brilliant in this novel and I thought he got that really fantastically. I mean, another spoiler alert here. The part when, you know, Tess loses her baby and the effect that that has on Tess because obviously she is she is raped essentially by Alec and you know when she loses her baby after she calls it sorrow I mean come on that is a very very uh, silly name to call a child and I think that part I got a bit annoyed at Hardy because like you don't really need to call a baby sorrow if, in order for your readers to understand that Tess is feeling sorrow anyway when she loses the baby, the way that it was described, it was like so real, so real. And I just, I had to, I had to put my Kindle down for a while and just kind of take real deep breaths to kind of like comprehend what I just read because so many times I read books with really sad parts in, with death of children, and I don't feel anything, or death of babies, and I don't feel anything because sometimes authors struggle to get that feeling right. I think um but Hardy got it really well and I was really impressed by it and not only that this is a heartbreaking story man man is it depressing my lecture was just like full of people sat there like this for the whole time because we were all so depressed at this depressing story even though it is absolutely fantastic it's so depressing and I recommend that you do not read it if you're in a very bad mood because you'll probably cry and you won't stop crying for like a week. So don't do that. Okay, my next point. What is with Alec, man? Like, I started reading it and I was introduced to his character and I was, I, I hated him instantly. I hated his little thin moustache that he kept twiddling like this. I was like, who does that? Some kind of like old like cartoon villains sat there like mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. like y you know that he's gonna be a bad character but why why did Hardy give him such a disgusting description seriously the, the description of like this pencil like mustache that you would twiddle every now and again it just made me so uncomfortable but that's kind of the brilliant thing though isn't it like we're meant to feel a little bit uncomfortable with Alec because he rapes Tess I think that was really well done as well. The characterisation of Alec was brilliant. I hated him, like from the start. He was just creepy as hell. You would not want to go near him. Don't touch him with a barge pole. Okay, my next, my next kind of like query, I guess, on this book. Um, do we like Angel Claire? I mean, once he's found out about what Tess has been through and the fact that you know she slept with another man before and she conceived a child with him although the child died and then Angel's reaction even though he himself has had an affair with an older woman 
Angel's reaction is to run away because he can't deal with the fact that Tess is almost spoiled goods. So do we like him or not? I mean, he comes back, but why does he come back? Why did he find it so hard to deal with the fact that Tess had been with another man in the first place? And this is kind of thing again. Do do men see Tess as just uh, an object of their sexual desires? That's a question I put out there. If you have read Tess of the Devil, comment down below on what you thought of Angel Clay and what you think of the whole um, him running out on Tess thing. I mean, it's a bit of a douchey thing to do anyway, but I want to know what you think. Because, you know, he did come back in the end. But yeah, let me know what you think. Incidentally, if you have not seen the BBC version of Tess of the Durbervilles, I think it was like a serious thing they did, um, Eddie Redmayne plays uh, Angel Clare. And considering he won his Oscars at the Oscar ceremony, I think that's pretty relevant right now. So if, you, if you've read the book and you haven't seen the BBC adaptation, then go watch it. Eddie Redmayne. Very young in it though, very young. Uh, another question I have for you guys out there, this is my first Hardy novel and I really enjoyed it. And if any of you out there have read any more Hardy, like Far From The Maddening Crowd, or Mayor of Casterbridge, or the other one that I'm forgetting the name of, Jude the Obscure, if you've read any of those, comment down below. In comparison to Tessa Durville, do you prefer something else of Hardy's? Do you think that this is his best novel? I'm just curious because I really like Hardy and like to get into more of him, but I'm just curious as to know whether this is possibly his best novel or not. And my last but not least point is I think that the ending was absolutely fantastic. Uh, another spoiler alert here. When Tess kills Alec and there's the blood stain on on the ceiling and the woman who owns the house sees it i think that is just literally that is the pinnacle of this book for me i just i love that bit so much i don't know because how sinister would it be right i live in a block of flats it would be so sinister if i was just lying in bed one night and this massive like red blob just starts spreading over my ceiling and dripping down on it was somebody's blood and it's it's a horrible image but it's also like such a powerful one and I think that this is this is definitely for me the best part of the novel even though it's pretty gross so that's pretty much all I have to say about Tess of the Dovervilles comment down below what you thought of the novel if you've read it comment down below if you've read any other Hardy novels um yeah just just have a conversation with me it'll be great and um, as for what I'm reading at the moment I am currently still reading Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. I'm now on page 73. I haven't got much further through this to be honest. I've got so much to read for my course. I don't, I have literally no time to read anything else other than the books that are on my course. But incidentally, um, I am reading two other books at the moment. Um, I'm reading Dubliners by James Joyce. This is for my studying literature module in university. I am currently 64 pages through it and my opinion at the moment is it's alright, it's quite difficult actually. I struggle to engage with the stories quite a lot and, and engage with the culture of Dublin but I'll give it more time and if I really like it I'll do a video review on it, if not I'm just going to leave it because there's no point for me really talking about a book that I'm I don't feel opinion, an opinion either way, like I really love it or already hate it, I'm not going to do a review. Um, and I'm also reading Tales of Mystery and the Supernatural by Edgar Allan Poe. I got this on offer with Dubliners actually, it was buy one get one free. And I've read the first story in um, Tales of Mystery and the Supernatural and yeah, it's very Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I will probably do a review on this once I've got to the end of it, which is not going to be anytime soon. But yeah, I'll do a review on it because I really like um, scary novels and scary stories. And the first story was very weird. I was kind of a bit confused as to what was going on, but besides the point, it's pretty good. So that's all I have time for this evening. And I really hope that you enjoyed my review of Tesla Dovervilles. If you didn't, then I'm sorry. I've done my best. I don't have much more to say about it other than some literary analysis, but 
I don't want to seem pretentious. So have a good evening everyone and I will upload a video very soon. Bye!